environmental management is a purposive activity with the goal to maintain and improve the state of an environmental resource which is affected by human activities. Those activities refers to enhance benefits from the environment and minimize the effects among resource systems and the environment itself, which seeks to attain desirable environmental systems, which is a response to community desires and perceptions under prevailing technological and socio-economic conditions. Environmental management is actually multi-purpose because environmental management does not focus only on a certain resource, but it focuses on a resource system and their environments. To this, we have seven environmental management principles. The first environmental management principle is polluters pay principle. This actually equates to the absolute liability for the damage that you had caused, for the damage that you caused in the environment, which extend not only to compensate the victims, but at the same time, the cost of restoring the degradation to the environment. For example, firms that are discharging effluents to a certain river should somehow be made to pay a price for such discharges which relates to the amount of environmental damage costs. Another explanation to this is there should be an allocation of the cost of pollution prevention and there should be a control measures. The PPP or the polluters pay principle has been the general basis of environmental policy. It also states that if measures are adapted to reduce pollution, the cost should be borne by the polluter. In short, if you are the polluter, then you have to pay. You have to pay not only for the discharge, but also to the damage that you cause to the environment and the cost on how to restore it again. The next environmental management principle is the user pays principle or UPP. This means that all resources users should pay for the long run marginal cost of the use of resource and related services, in which this includes associated treatment costs. The user pay principle is a variation also of the polluter pays principle, in which the user pays principle calls upon the user of a natural resource to bear the cost of running down a certain natural resource or natural capital. In other terms, users of a natural capital should pay for a certain exclusive privilege granted to them to use a public resource in which this principle is usually implemented for licenses or quotas or other taxes, other kinds of taxes. The third environmental management principle is the precautionary principle or PP. This principle ensures that a substance or any activity posing threat to the environment is prevented from adversely affecting the environment. So even if there is no conclusive scientific study of a certain activity, but if there is a possibility that the environment could be damaged, then therefore you have to be cautious or you have to do precautionary measures. This principle was also tackled during the Rio Declaration in which this principle was emphasized that if there are serious threats or irreversible damage and because of a certain lack of scientific certainty, that could be used as a very good reason in postponing cost-effective measures to prevent environmental degradation in which this principle is very essential for protecting the environment and of course human health, specifically in implementing in the field of production and distribution of energy resources. The next environmental management principle is the principle of participation. This calls that everyone, all persons, has the duty to participate, to participate collectively in any environmental decision-making activities. Some participation areas could be in using wildlife, 
soil, minerals, fishes, plants, trees for purposes as a source of food, materials, and other consumptive and non-consumptive recreation. At the same time, we should also participate in any issues that would concern construction and demolition, solid waste management, or gar garbage disposal, chemically hazardous waste, and other kind of waste. And of course, and of course, the issue on activities that generates pollution. The next environmental management principle is the principle of effectiveness and efficiency. So the efficiency of resources use may be accomplished by the use of any policy that creates incentive to minimize any wasteful uses. This principle is also variously applied in environmental policy, specifically on environmental governance, by highlighting processes and procedures in order to minimize environmental cost. The next environmental management principle is the principle of responsibility. This means that it's not only me, you, it means that it's not only your responsibility and my responsibility, but all persons, corporations, states, other sectors has the responsibility to participate in maintaining ecological processes. In which this further explains that access to a certain natural resource carries attendant responsibilities to use them in an ecological, sustainable, economically efficient, and socially fair manner. It doesn't mean that if you own a land with a very good quality of water, you can just take a bath every hour. Of course, you have to respect the other users. Maybe it's in your private land, but since water is a public resource, you have to respect that and use it sustainably. So the last environmental management principle is the principle of proportionality. This is actually on the concept of balance in which a balance should be maintained between the economic development and environmental protection. As we all know, we cannot really argue that every time there is a development, there is always a possible adverse effect to the ecology in which it is very essential to adjust to the interest of the people and to address its necessities. However, at the same time, maintaining the environment. We also have to compare and, of course, balance the benefits of having a new development that would cause Those are the seven basic principles of environmental management.